Fox News alert. New reaction to the mayor of Arizona border city Yuma declaring an emergency amid the border crisis, saying his community is struggling to cope with an unprecedented number of migrant families being released there. I have already signed the emergency proclamation. There is a, an imminent threat on having too many um, migrant releases into our community and it's above our capacity as a community to sustain. So it's, it's with a heavy heart that I declare that we're at this point, but it is something that I believe uh, we need to do. Meanwhile, California Democrats this week stepped up their attacks on President Trump over his threat to send detained migrants to sanctuary cities. California Governor Gavin Newsom calling the idea nonsensical observing that the president campaigned on deporting illegal immigrants, but his latest proposal would keep them inside the U.S. And now this, Attorney General William Barr overturning a 2005 ruling, uh, ruling that some asylum seekers are not eligible to be released on bail while their cases are heard. It's an effort to crack down on so-called catch-and-release policies, and Republican Congressman Pete King applauding the move. It's something that has to be done. Listen, uh, our hearts go out to many of the people around the world, but the reality is we can't take everybody in, and we have to look carefully at these asylum claims. As it turns out, many of them turn out not to be real, to be phony, but it gets the person in the country, and then they disappear or they come back two years later for a court hearing. So, no, I think the attorney general is doing what has to be done, and I fully support him. Short time ago, the Democratic National Committee responding to Barr's move in a statement saying, quote, instead of addressing the root causes of the humanitarian crisis in Central America and at our border, Trump continues to push his cruel and unconstitutional agenda. Unlike Trump and Republicans in Congress, Democrats believe diversity and compassion is our nation's greatest strengths. We believe in working to end the violence that has caused so many to flee their homes. Katie, it seems like they've kind of changed the issue again. Yeah. Now it's about addressing the violence in Central America. In the meantime, I mean, this poor mayor, you saw him at the beginning there, and I just want to read a, a couple more things that he said. It's an imminent threat posed by too many migrant releases in our community. Something that we need, it is something we need to do to make sure that our community is maintained and that the human rights of the migrants are maintained and that we have a path forward that respects both. We are looking for a FEMA-type response. It's not a natural disaster, but it's a disaster either way. They want their resources to come in and take care of this situation. He's begging for help. Well, because the disaster and the chaos has gotten so out of control with Congress failing to address this problem back in 2014 when it really started, we now have an overpowering situation where humanitarian conditions have deteriorated as a result of not being able to handle the flow of people. But I want to give some context as to why the ruling by Barr matters in terms of the asylum. So when you are given asylum, your first round, 90% of the asylum cases that are filed initially are thrown out. But after you get your first asylum claim filed, you are protected from deportation, you are released into the center of the country, and you are now eligible to get a work permit. So being able to hold people who apply for asylum to get into the second round to make sure that they're actually eligible is very important. And when it comes to dealing with this issue, as a result of the poll factors that we've allowed, the work permits being released into the country, this idea that Gavin Newsom is now saying that President Trump wants to keep them here. He doesn't. He would prefer that we stop them from coming in the first place. But the fact is they're being released. And this is now a resource problem, which the mayor of Yuma is talking right. about. It costs money. It costs facilities. It costs American taxpayers, whether you're building new facilities or you're providing humanitarian aid. They are the ones responsible for this. And so the administration is trying again to find a solution while Congress still hasn't put something on the table yeah. that can be passed and signed into law. Jerry, I like the way that, that this mayor framed it, though, which is that we're just trying to respect everyone's basic human rights, mm. both the people that are already here and the migrants that are that are coming over, mm. right? It is a crisis. I mean, it's a crisis. For, it's, 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 it's terrible for everybody, okay? These people uh, are, are generally fleeing a terrible situation where they come from, but it is important, and I do think for the Democrats to say it's up to the president to address the root causes of the crisis in Central America, that's a bit of a reach, really. I mean, how is the president supposed to actually, instead of dealing with the issues in the United States, deal with economic and social privations in places like Honduras and Guatemala 
to stop people coming here. That's, that's just an absurd argument, to be honest with you. It's up to those countries who have to deal with that. The president's responsibility is to protect people in this country and to make sure that there is law and order observed in this country and to help local communities like that uh, mayor of Yuma uh, to actually deal with the crisis as it exists. And I think it's, you're absolutely right. It, 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 it's a terrible situation for everybody. But ultimately, Pete, this, is, this is a law enforcement issue and the United States is not under any obligation, really isn't under any obligation, to let anybody who wants to come into this country come here, okay? Right. It has to have control over its own borders. That is actually what defines national sovereignty. If you don't have control over your own borders, you really don't have any national sovereignty. So it's completely reasonable for the president and for Republicans to say, no, you know what? We've got to find a way to stop these number of people. As, as much pity as we may have for them, we have the right to say, no, we can't let these people just come in here and be released into the community, which is exactly what this case well, described what happens. The other thing that Congress said, even though it was short on its money, when it rewarded $1.6 billion to the president to continue on with his promises about building a border fence line or wall. Uh, the other message is he's exactly going to do that now. And Congress, you've already told me that I could as the president. The Defense Department just about a week ago announced that it had awarded $976 million in contracts to build the president's wall. And what we saw yesterday was the meeting with lawmakers uh, and wall prototype builders to talk about what works best. Fisher Industries says that they can build a mile and a half of that fence line a day. We're looking for 11 miles of it in Yuma. We're looking for 46 miles of it in El Paso to deal with what Border Patrol have told us as reporters and the White House that they need. That is happening. That's happening. Leslie? Yeah. Uh, I, I would just say, being that I live in California and we have the majority of uh, migrants come to California and where the president wanted to dump them, which I think is absurd to your, using that term, uh, that, that doesn't solve the problem. Congress has a responsibility where here. Where should we put this? Them? Is, Congress has a responsibility here. Right now, we know left and right that there are laws that we have on the books that need to be fixed, that need to be changed, and specifically, those are asylum laws, and specifically the amount of money that so isn't currently given What do we do between now the and the time system. that a politically constipated Congress that does very little of anything on this issue, if anything at all... I, I smile because you said that. Uh, the I, term, I, uh, I, I know. Where do these people stay? Time, but where it's these a people visual stay and it works. No, no, so I what agree. do we do I, in the gap between what we need right now Right now, since everybody agrees it's a crisis, mm -hmm. at least, the president says emergency, BP, Border Patrol says emergency, what do we do between now and the time that it would take for Congress to actually go do something on this issue? I think we, we do what the uh, mayor of Yuma has requested. I think that we provide the support because he has said this is a humanitarian crisis. You have to look at do they have enough food, do they have enough water, do they have enough shelter? We're talking about families, over a third, 36,000 plus of the 90-some thousand right, he's that we have don't, are families. They don't have those resources, so why Correct. does it not make sense to and take them somewhere cities. to a sanctuary city that wants to welcome? Them. You, you, you can't, well, first of all, just as the acting head of ICE said, there are liabilities there. If something happens in transport, especially to a child, second, there's cost. What is the cost of that going to be? It could be far uh, larger than it could be to address them where they are. And uh, third, a person who is in any jurisdiction, once they are released under our current asylum laws, does not need to remain in that jurisdiction. They transport people all the time.